Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make detailed videos about evolutionary developmental biology of goldfish, so I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evodivo. In this episode, I will explain morphological features of the wild type goldfish. But before that, let me explain the complicated situation of the nomenclature of goldfish varieties. Various types of goldfish strains have been established through selective breeding. These strains are named by breeders and fanciers. Researchers attempt to categorize these strains. However, there is no consensus on a standard system for classifying ornamental goldfish. Additionally, the lack of the standardized nomenclature system for the various strains led us confused in using these ornamental goldfish as research models. To avoid this confusion, I first defined the wild type goldfish and provide a detailed description of its morphological features based on vertebrate anatomy textbooks. In previous literature, there has been no explicit definition of the morphology of wild type goldfish. Therefore, to avoid confusion in future discussions, we define the wild type goldfish as follows. First, it should have a slender body. Second, it must have a single caudal fin. Third, there must be no mutations in its other external morphology. Goldfish with these three characteristics will be referred to as wild type goldfish. Here I have nothing to say about color variation. The detailed reason for this will be given later, but for now, I will just state that our main purpose is to discuss the evolution of goldfish morphology. Many of you may be wondering, is the wild type goldfish the same as a walking? In some ways, yes, the wild type is equivalent with the walking. At first, I thought it was appropriate to use walking to indicate the wild type. However, there are different caudal fin morphologies in the walking strain. There are single tail walking and twin tail walking and even different strains of twin tail walking. Therefore, simply calling them walking does not provide any information about the caudal fin morphology. So I think some of you ask me why not use common goldfish to refer the wild type. Uh, well, there is also inconsistency in how walking and the common goldfish are used. In some literatures, walking has been translated as a common goldfish. However, as I mentioned, the name walking doesn't indicate whether the goldfish has a single tail or twin tail. This means that some researchers use the term common goldfish without considering the tail morphology. I hope my explanation has given you some insight into the problems surrounding the naming of wild type goldfish. I also want to comment more about the term wild type. The term wild type is commonly used in some research fields relating to genetics to describe the natural genetic condition of a specific organism. However, applying this term to domesticate the goldfish can be confusing for breeders, fanciers, and researchers who study wild populations of Carassius oratus. What I mean is that for some researchers, the term wild type refers to Carassius oratus living in their natural habitat without undergoing the domestication process. But in this series, we will compare the morphological features among ornamental goldfish strains, so we will apply wild type to the single tail common goldfish. This situation is similar to researchers who compare wild type laboratory strains with mutant strains of experimental animals. By defining the single tail common goldfish as a wild type, we can define as ornamental strains with different morphologies are considered as mutant strains. Okay, we will go to see the morphology. Based on comparative vertebrate anatomy textbooks, the body parts of wild type goldfish can be divided into two levels, cranial and postcranial levels. 
the post granular level is further divided into the trunk and caudal levels based on the location of the cloaca. At the post cranial level, there are two sets of paired fins, pectoral and pelvic fins, and three median fins, including the dorsal, anal, and caudal fins. Median and paired fins are significantly different in how they are located on the body. Let's see the fish body from the ventral side. The pectoral and the pelvic fins are located on the lateral and the ventral sides of the body respectively, while all of the median fins are located on the sagittal plane. Using this picture, I explain the sexual dimorphism of goldfish. This picture is adult male goldfish. Why I can say so? Because I can recognize male-specific morphological features. Sexual dimorphism can be observed in mature adult goldfish by the presence or absence of breeding tubercules. You can see the breeding tubercules here. Uh, so, this one is male. When you touch the male fish, you obviously feel the difference between male and females in the texture of the surface of the cranial region. Basically, the wild-type goldfish has no mutated phenotypes at the cranial level. The breeding tubercules can be easily recognized. On the other hand, well matured females exhibit the oviduct. If we want to see more in detail, please check my previous videos. Additionally, I will explain how to identify males and females in the near future episode again. We will further check the internal skeleton of the wild type goldfish. When examining a skeletal sample of a goldfish from a lateral view, the calcified cranial skeleton and the segmentally arranged axial skeleton can be observed. Additionally, the conventional and modified ribs from the first to fourth vertebrae can be seen, forming the Weberian apparatus. In this goldfish specimen, there are a total of 30 centra extending from the most anterior ventral element to the compound centrum attaching to the parhypural and hypural at the posterior end, at the boundary between the cranial and trunk levels. The pectoral fin extends and forms a complex skeletal structure, and the pelvic fins are located at the ventral side of the trunk level. In this picture, we will examine the skeleton of the dorsal and anal fins of the wild-type goldfish. These fins consist of fin rays and the internal skeletal element, radials or radial pterygii of us. In this picture, we can see that the second radial bone is attaching to the thickest fin ray, which is highly calcified and segmented compared to the other fin rays. This segmented fin spine is also known as a hard ray in some literature. Let's move on to the caudal fin. This fin is quite important feature of goldfish morphology. From lateral view, the caudal fin outlines those ventrally symmetric, a shape commonly seen in other terrorist species. This symmetric shape is characterized by a cleft which allows us to distinguish the upper and lower fin lobes. These fin rays are attached to the caudal fin skeleton. Since the caudal fin skeleton is attached to the knot cord, the caudal fin skeleton can be recognized as a part of the axial skeleton. Since you have now learned about the fin skeleton of goldfish, you have a better understanding of their morphology and evolution. In the next episode, we will be discuss how to classify goldfish strains for evo devo studies. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.